If you want to make a normal natural edge bowl, you find the center with a tape measure and put a hole in it and that's fine. Well, what I have done is I've moved this center half an inch that way. And on the other side, I've moved this center half an inch that way. So the axis is now one inch out of alignment with the piece of wood. To make sure that I get a really good bite with the spur drive, I drill a one inch hole through the bark into the wood. Because if you just put the spur drive into the bark, it's gonna come out of the machine. So, having drilled everything, it makes it a lot easier to put in place. As somebody said when they were here doing a demo the other day, you don't come in from the end this way because that's disaster waiting from ha to happen. You have to come from the behind the wood out. Well, that's spinning, according to that, at about 600 RPM. This is Mr. Batty's 4040 grind gouge. And to grind it, you put your plate on your grinder at 40 degrees to the, this is the 40, between the axis and the bevel. And you mark 40 degrees on each side of center. You just lay the gouge on each side until the flute is horizontal, parallel to the, and you just bring that round to the other side, and then you can just spin it, and you get this lovely, all equal cutting edge all the way around the work face. So whichever way you've got this gouge to turn, it's 40 degrees, which is handy. So, let's get ready to make a lot of noise. Let's put that on the other side out of the way. So I'm bringing the gouge in at 40 degrees so that the bevel is at the right angle. have to watch that side because you can't see anything this side so you have to watch where your gouge is on the far side of the work Right, so it went up to vibrations and I took it 
down just a little bit. That's the only thing about spur drives. Bet you lads that guys just there are happy I'll put the, with the shields out. Ah! Did that spur drive in deeper? I know this is ever so naughty, and I'm not meant to do it, but it's easier. Man. That would help. My legs are slightly different height to this one. Things. Um, that became quite annoying. Right, let's level the bottom out a bit. But you can see we start to get quite an interesting shape here. You know, we've still got to come in a bit to to get that. What's the wood, Nigel? This is a piece of ash that I had lying around. I keep on forgetting where the start switch is on this thing. violent pastime. Right, now, we still haven't 
we're going to need about, it has to be flat. You, know, you need a base about yay big. So I'm just going to make this flat area a little bigger. Stuart Batten's recent video on bolt turning with this gouge and the amount I learned watching that video is unbelievable. It comes highly recommended. interesting bit because you're cutting for maybe 15% of the time so you can't force the gouge against the work if you do you're going in the air gap and then the piece of wood comes around and clobbers you that I want to get rid of and 
If you make the, the base too large, as I did on the one I practiced with this morning, you end up with vertical sides and it doesn't look good. This, you know, the, the grain runs that way. Let's, let's get the profile of the bowl running with the grain. I think that looks kind of sexy. And we should be able to get a little bit more speed out of it now. a little bit more rounded. Is there a reason you're using a 40 degree? Could you yeah. use something else? You could use a fingernail, you know, like a sorby fingernail, you can use... The reason that... I mean, I tried this having watched the video I told you about, and I just find it an easy grind to use, and I just wanted to, having seen the video, I wanted to see if what, you know, what Stuart Batty was talking about. And it is a nice grind to use. And it's an easy grind to reproduce without having any of the uh, grinding jigs and mechanisms where you, you know, it, it, so this you do purely freehand. Once you've got your plate set up on the grinder, it's all done by hand. And once you learn how to do it, it's dead easy to do, and it's very easy to repeat.
half decent profile. I think it uh, follows the grain nicely. Got a nice base. So now we have to make the tinner. We just had a discussion with Bill and Janet about internal versus external tenons. I personally prefer compressing external tenons because I've had too many internal tenons blow up on me. And I use the little 3 8 um, sorry, quarter inch parting beading tool for squaring. So I'm not where that edge is now. And the internal dimension of a pair of number two jaws is, I think, one and seven eighths, if I've got it right. So I want to be just over two inches of center. Have I missed everything up? Now this is where it gets interesting. If you have a movable headstock blade, at this point I would advise you to spin it like 30 degrees. It just makes life so much easier. Okay, so you gotta do lots of spinning and checking here just to make sure that you've got it in the right place. And it, nothing's going to go smash while it's going around. All right. Hold on to your braces, folks. Here we go. Now, I start from the middle and slowly work my way out. Let's get the tool rest in the right place. And it's not right. That's about as close as I get it without interference. Okay, it's all offset and wobbly.
keep on getting my head between the light and the piece of work which is not assisting me.
square on. We need to get a little bit in the middle and break it off. jam chock on there and take the tenon off and everything. Okay. Now that's true. Thank you for reminding me because of course that 3.8 comes off the calculations of depth. Oh. So that is, you say, inch and a quarter. I can go, I can go down off an inch. We don't want to go through the bottom, do we? Ricky, Ricky wouldn't like that on his bottle. <laughs> well, he could fix it. That's quite enough. It's all right. Well, that's it. Yes, Roy. Should have done that. Maybe. You're in the way now. You've got to go.
Right, let's see if I can even up the entry a bit. Now come to getting rid of the tin on. Now I made this clever little gizmo I'm about to use. So it's a nice big block of maple I had lying around. Put a tin on it for the number two dovetail jaws. You could use um, clear white plastic hose. I just screwed it on. So you now have a nice, flexible dry surface. Silicone's soft and squishy, so it doesn't damage anything. So we're going to guesstimate middle, because I don't have all the gear with me. Okay. Right <laughs> <laughs> any ones on there. So, this is, you know, one size fits all, pretty, unless of course it's too small. No. 
That's pretty close, isn't it? Yep. All right. So it's pinched in there now. Can't go anywhere. relatively good finish as well. And we just put our decorative curly cues in. We take the famous Japanese back cut saw. Oh. 